Are you struggling to understand the difference between the two evaluation contexts in DAX, namely the filter context and the row context? Then this video is for you. Because in this video, we're going to explain the difference between the filter context and the row context. And by the end of the video, you'll clearly comprehend the difference between them and be able to explain it in simple terms. And we're starting right now. All right, so before starting to explain the filter context and the row context, let's check out our data model. So here we have our data model where we have a sales table as our fact table, and we have a calendar table here linked to the sales table through the, the date and the order date columns. And we've got a product table as well linked through the product ID, a region table linked through the region ID, and a vendor table as well that has a relationship or linked through the vendor ID column. And we've got a disconnected table here for our measures. All right, so let's start with the filter context. So the filter context can simply be defined as the set of filters applied to the data when a DAX expression or formula is evaluated. So let's insert a matrix visual, which is like a pivot table in Excel. And in that matrix visual, I'm gonna put the product category column in the rows area and I'm going to put the region column in the columns area and I'm going to drag my total quantity measure which is simply the summation of the order quantity column on the sales table I'm going to put that in the values area and you can notice here that I have different results in the different cells of this matrix visual which is like a pivot table as we said before. So the reason that we have different results is that we have different filters applied to the different cells of this visual. So for example, in this cell here that has the result of 725, the filter context is that the region is equal to central and the product category is equal to accessories. In this cell here that has the result of 511, the filter context is that the region is north and the product category is computer. In this one here, the filter context is that the region is north. However, with regards to the product category, there are no filters on the product category. Therefore, it's reporting the order quantity for all the product categories in the north region. And this one here is reporting the sales for all the regions for the computer product category. So there is no filter applied here in the region. And for this one, 10,982, this is the grand total of everything. So this is the total quantity for all the regions and all the products. So in this cell, there are no filters applied. So we said that the filter context is the set of filters applied to the data when a DAX formula is evaluated. So as you could see, we have one DAX formula, which is the total quantity, but we're getting different results. So the reason that we're getting different results is that we have different sets of filters applied. Now let's try to see an example visually. So for example, here, this number 621 is the result of applying the product category being equal to computer and the region being equal to central. So if we go to our sales table and you can see here I have a product category column that I created, it's a calculated column. So we can filter for the product category being equal to computer and for the region being equal to central. And you can see here, we now have this order quantity column here. So if you copy the values on that column and if we open Excel and paste these values, you will see here that the summation is 621, which is the same result we have here. So this is the summation of the order quantity for computer and central region. So basically what happens in this cell is that these filters are applied on the table before the formula is evaluated, which are the region being equal to central and the product category being equal to computer. And then the formula is evaluated, which is simply summing this order quantity column and you get this result. So the same concept applies to the other cells as well. So here the product category is going to be equal to computer and the region is going to be equal to east and so on and so forth. But here, for example, for this grand total, there are no filters applied whatsoever. So 
if we remove all the filters, let's just right click and clear all filters and check the order quantity column. And let's go to Excel and let's paste all the values here for the order quantity. And if we sum them up, we'll find that the result is 10,982, which is the same result we have here. And this is the total order quantity for the whole table with no filters applied. All right, so to summarize what we said, the filter context is the set of filters that are applied to a table during a calculation. And this is what results in different results while having the same formula. It's because the same formula is executed against a different set of filters for each cell here. And this applies to charts as well. So let's say we insert a column chart and we put the product category and we put the total quantity here on the Y axis, you'll see here that we have different results on the column chart. And this is because we have different filters applied on each value of the column chart or on each column. So you can see here that this column has the filter of only accessories. So this is the total quantity for accessories. We can actually enable the data labels just to be able to see the numbers. So the total quantity for accessories is 5,637. For computers is 4,200. And for mobiles, it's 1,101. Now, let me add also that filters don't originate only from inside a visual. They can also come from outside the visual. So let's say we insert a slicer and we add the vendor to the slicer. So this slicer is now filtering these two visuals. So now the results that we see here are the results for the different product categories in the different regions, but only for the vendor that is called alpha circuit. And here it's the results for the product category only for the vendor that is called alpha circuit. And you will notice here that the total for each product category, 549 for accessories is 549 here, 460 for computers is 460 here and 119 for mobiles is this number that we have here. So you can see here that filters can also come from outside the visual. Also in Power BI, visuals can filter each other. So in this case here, if I click on the accessories column on this column chart, you'll see here that a filter for the accessors will be applied in addition to the filter for the vendor being alpha circuit. So the filter for accessories has been applied to this matrix visual or pivot table. So you can see here, we only now see the results for accessories because there's a filter that has been applied from this uh, column chart because in Power BI, visuals can filter each other. Of course, you can control the filtration of the visuals towards each other. So you can make a visual filter other visuals or not filter other visuals. So you can control that. But I'm just illustrating the concept that in Power BI, visuals can filter each other, which is not the case in Excel Power Pivot, for example, because in Excel, you can't filter a chart using another chart. You can only filter a chart using a slicer or a timeline, but not using another chart. All right, so if you have a visual and you need to understand why you have a certain number on the visual. So for example, if you need to understand why you have 103 as the result in this cell, for example, then you need to know what set of filters are affecting this cell in order to get this result. So in this case, it's accessories in the South region for the vendor being alpha circuit. So these are the set of filters affecting this cell and resulting in this value. So this is the importance of the filter context because it helps us understand why we're getting a certain value on a certain visual. All right, so let's now talk about the row context. So the row context is simply the ability to iterate through a table row by row and perform a calculation or evaluate a formula or an expression such that the formula is evaluated in the context of a single row in the table. So it helps DAX know which row to use when executing a formula. So this is actually simpler than it sounds. So let's go to the examples. So here we have the sales table and we have the order quantity column and the unit price column. And let's say we want to calculate the sales amount. So if we create a new column in the table, a new calculated column, and we call it sales amount, 
And for this column, we're going to simply multiply the order quantity on each row. So the value of the order quantity on each row by the value of the price per unit for each row as well. So if we write this formula and press enter, you will see here that we're able to calculate that for each row. And this formula has worked because calculated columns have a row context by default. So as long as you're creating a calculated column, then you are in a row context. And this means that the formula will be executed for each row in the table. However, if we try to copy this exact formula, and instead of using it in a calculated column, we create a measure instead. So let's create a new measure here. I'm going to call it sales amount as a measure. And if we paste this formula, you will see that we have syntax issues here with the formula. We have this line here, this red line under the order quantity. This means that the syntax is not correct. And if we try to execute this measure, so press enter, you'll see here that we get an error. This error says a single value for the column order quantity in the table fact sales cannot be determined. This can happen when a measure formula refers to a column that contains many values without specifying an aggregation such as min, max, count, or sum to get a single result. Well, this error is not very clear on what the issue is. But the issue is that you have given this measure a whole column. So you can see here, I've given it the whole order quantity column in the sales table and the whole price per unit column in the sales table. But the measure cannot determine which row to execute the formula for. So here in the sales table, it doesn't know which of these rows should it execute the formula for. So should it multiply the order quantity on the price per unit for the first row or for this row, which is the fifth row or for the 10th row? It doesn't know which row to execute the formula for. And therefore, it won't know which values to multiply by each other. Is it the five by the 21.37 or is it the 10 by 23.5? The formula is not able to determine that because there is no row context when executing this formula or this expression. So in order to make this measure work, what we need to do is to create a row context in this formula here for the measure. So one way to create a row context and make the calculation do what we need it to do is to use the sumx function. So the sumx function is an iterator function that creates a row context. The first input for the sumx function and for actually most of the iterator functions is the table that you need to iterate through. So in this case, it's the sales table that we need to iterate through row by row. So this is what we're going to provide as the first input. And then the second input will be the calculation that we need to do for each row when iterating through the table. So what we're telling DAX or Power BI is that we need to go through the sales table row by row. And then for each row, multiply the order quantity by the unit price. And then at the end, we're going to sum up all the results. So you'll see here that currently we don't have any problems with the syntax here of the formula. There were there are no red squiggly lines. And if we press enter to execute the measure, you'll see here that there will be no errors. And the value for the measure for the whole sales table is 4.59 million. So just to show you how the measure works again. So on the sales table, what will happen is that the formula will go through the sales table row by row and multiply the order quantity by the unit price. So on the first row here, we'll multiply eight by 22.61. So for the first row, the formula will be eight by 22.61 and we'll get the result, which is 180 point 88, which is this value here. And then it will do the same for the second row. So it will be nine by 21.26, which is going to be 191.34. And it will just keep on doing the same for each row in the table. And then at the end, what it will do is that it will sum up all the results. So for each row, we're going to get a result here, result, result, just like this one here. So, and then at the end, what it's going to do is that it's going to sum up all the results. And this will be the result of the sumx function, which is equivalent to doing this sales amount calculated column, where on each row, we multiply the order quantity by the unit price. And the formula works here, because as we 
mentioned before, calculated columns have a row context by default, and this is why we don't need to use the SUMX function. But of course, when developing Power BI reports, you shouldn't be using this sales amount calculated column. You shouldn't be doing this because this is not a good practice. The better practice is to use a measure and use the SUMX function that we showed earlier because calculated columns take more space in the memory of your computer and it also increases the storage space needed for your report. So you shouldn't be using a calculated column like this. You should be using a measure instead. So just to confirm the results of our sales amount measure that we created, we can just sum up the results of the sales amount calculated column. So if we copy the values here and open Excel and paste them, so you can see here that the summation is 4.59 million dollars which is the same amount that we have here however as we said you should not be creating this kind of calculated column to calculate the sales amount you should be creating a measure using the SUMX function instead. So the wrong process would be creating this calculated column and then maybe creating another measure as well here to just sum up the sales amount column. So I'll just call this sales amount wrong. This is because this is the wrong way of doing it, which is to sum up the sales amount column on the sales table. This is not the right way to do it. The right way to do it is to use this sales amount here as a measure, this measure using the SUMX function because measures get executed on the fly and they use your CPU as a resource. They don't use storage on your computer or computer memory. So they are much better than calculated columns. And in reality and in practice, for every 10 calculations you'd be doing or 10 formulas that you'd be writing, eight or nine would be measures and only one or two would be a calculated column. And if you'd like me to make more videos about DAX in Power BI, let me know in the comments below. So just to wrap up before we conclude the video, there is a statement that I'm quoting from Marco Rosso and Alberto Ferrari from their book, which is the definitive guide to DAX, which basically summarizes what the filter context and the row context do. So the quote says that the filter context filters and the row context iterates. So that's a simple statement that summarizes what the filter context and the row context do. So the filter context filters and the row context iterates. So when you have a filter context, this means that you have some filters applied on your formula or expression that will dictate what the result will be. And when you have a row context, this means that you're able to iterate through the table row by row and execute a formula for each row. All right, guys, so this concludes our video today. So if you found the video helpful, please make sure to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified with all future videos. And please make sure to follow us on social media. You'll find the links down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.